Hi folks, it's Evo here from Thunderbus Lure Company. So nice to see you and welcome to today's episode of Thunderbus Fishing Tips. I'm out here fishing the mighty Niagara River. And today folks, we're looking for those big, strong carp. And uh, oh, helicopters. Niagara helicopters, regular rhythm. <laughs> He's flying rather low. All right, so the rig today, I've got a seven and a half foot medium action one piece rod. You notice I always use one piece rods. Uh, I prefer one piece over two. I definitely have two piece rods, but like I say, my preference is to use a one piece rod. It's stronger, it's more sensitive, more durable. I absolutely like it. So, uh, and then I'm running 20 pound braided line to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. And then I just tied on uh, one of the pre-tied T-turn bait rigs. And it's the number 5B, the one that's rated for carp. And it comes pre-tied with a 25 pound fluorocarbon line. And uh, you could always tell the true Thundermiss T-turn because it's all black. I like it, it keeps a low profile in the water, no line twists, no, line twists, no tangles. So, now the other thing I did is I loaded my, my hook up with corn. I'm gonna use corn today and I did something a little different. I've got, I brought frozen corn with me, which I thawed. Some of it I left as is. And others, I, what I did was I added some brown sugar to it. So the normal one is, is a nice yellow color. The brown sugar one is just a little bit off yellow color. And what I did is I've opened up, I've used the, the one that I sweetened with the brown sugar. Carp like a little bit of sweetness. Corn is sweet already to begin with, but I thought I'm gonna add a little bit of brown sugar. We'll give it a try. If it doesn't produce, I'll go back to the normal, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. And when I put the corn on the hook, I always put it on the flat side first. That way you could really stack a lot of corn on your hook and uh, cover it up very, very nicely. So, beautiful day. I've got my line in the water. I'm gonna keep my line a little bit semi-slack. I might hold it for a bit, see if I get a hit. Uh, but otherwise, I've got a couple of rocks here. I'll put it down and hopefully get into myself to some nice Niagara River carp. So glad you could join me. Okay, good thing I was holding my rod because he just picked it up and took off. Well, it looks like the brown sugar in the corn is working, so that answers that question. Okay, and it feels like a decent fish. He gave me a nice little run. Oh boy, I don't know. More and more people are carp fishing, and it's no wonder why. Because this really is a lot of fun. I honestly had my line in there for maybe five minutes. Unbelievable. I was not expecting a bite that quick. Speaking of which, if you don't get a bite in about 15 minutes, what you want to do is bring your line in and check it. Because some other fish might have nipped at your corn and taken it, or the other thing that could happen is your, oh, and I just lost them. Your corn could be sitting in, uh, in weeds or in a rock and, uh, and, and not accessible to the fish. So it's always good to take your line out check it and toss it back in again. Okay, I'm gonna rebate with that brown sugar corn and right back out I go. Oh, this one's just taking off. Oh, what a run, what a run. He's still running. <laughs> oh, he's taking off. Okay, it's been another five minutes, unreal. Now, I wanna tell you, you can't land them all. I lost that last fish and I know why. I was putting a little too much pressure on them to bring them in. And with this no stretch line, I'm using braid. And with the braid, when they go from side to side, because there's no stretch, what happens is if the hook is just in the, oh, just in the side of the mouth a bit, because it's no stretch, it just pulls it right out. And I think that's what happened with that last fish. So I'm gonna be a little more gentle with this one and see if I can get them in. And that's the thing with the braided line. It's got its advantages, but it also has its disadvantages. So you just need to keep those things in mind. Okay, I can't really horse this fish in, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my time with them. But these river fish, folks, I mean, you catch a carp in a reservoir or a pond. Uh-oh, is he stuck? They're strong. Oh no, he's not stuck. However, when you get them in a bigger lake system, like the Great Lakes, for example, or if you get them in, uh, in river systems like I'm fishing today, the Niagara River, they seem to be stronger. 
that much stronger and that much more fun. Okay, he's a way out there. I'm gonna have to try to, and he's got some weight to him. This, folks, is gonna be a real nice car. He's got some weight to him. Okay. Oh, boy. Come on, Mr. Carp. That was a lot of rocks out there as well, so I gotta be very, very careful. But that's where the fluorocarbon line comes in. It's a little more abrasion resistant than mono. So it'll help against those rocks. Which looks like he's in some rocks right now. No, no, he's not. It's just all weight. That's all him. That's gonna be that's gonna be a good fish. Let's see who tires out first, him or me. Oh yeah, he's got some weight to him. Thing when you're carp fishing, these three tight T turn bait rigs come with a size 2 octopus style hook, good quality hook, and that's what you need. You need a good quality hook when it comes to fishing for carp because if you have if you have a thin wire hook, they'll straighten it out like nothing because they're really, really strong and they're heavy. Okay, this guy is way out there, way out there. Oh, okay. Come on in, Mr. Kirk. I got a little bit of weed on my line, I see as well. Have to be careful with that, some floating weed. Okay, I'm starting to gain on him a bit. So I think I'm liking this, this corn with a little bit of brown sugar. Now, the other thing I want to mention too, carp feed by sight. So it's another reason why I like the corn, that nice yellow color. They can see that corn from quite a distance, especially when the, when the water is clear. But of course, they also feed by scent. So if you've got stained water, they'll find your bait. No worries there. Okay. This feels like a really good fish. You know what? Bass fishing, walleye fishing, I love it. Salmon, you, call, you name it, I love it. But I also love carp fishing. And once you start fishing for carp, it's addicting. Okay, I think that's why more and more people are fishing for carp. And you know what? Even if you are an avid salmon or walleye or if you're a bass angler, nothing wrong with going for carp, you know, two, three times a year. Mix it up a little bit, change up your day, change up your fishing, and have, some diff have a variety of fun. Why not do that? Oh, this is a good fish. I'm putting a lot of pressure on my arm, I'll tell you that. This is going to be a good fish. I hope I get a chance to see him. I hope I don't lose him. And that's where, now that he's close, it's tempting to kind of put a little more pressure on him. But that would be a big, big mistake. Because I'll lose him. So. <laughs> oh. Now these are common carp. These are not the Asian carp, the ones that everyone are worried about. These ones have been, they've been introduced to North America oh, 100 years ago or so. They've been around for a long time now. So they're part of our landscape. It's called a common carp. And that's what I'm fishing for today. Ah, I'm leaning into them a bit, but boy, they are strong. You can only move them so much. <laughs> and they got they got a lot of weight to them because they're really, really thick. Big wide girth. Big strong fish. Got him in now relatively close, but just not close enough. But there he is. He's come, coming closer to shore. Oh, that's a, that's a nice size carp. He's just... I got some lead on my line. Actually, that's a nice carp. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a nice carp. You know what I'm going to need to do? I'm going to have to wade out a little bit. Get that fish. That way I don't... Oh, horse him up on these rocks. But he's still got... <laughs> believe it or not, he's still got a lot of strength to him. It is unbelievable the power and the strength. And the endurance that these carp have. I mean, honestly, if this was a bass, he would have been in a long time ago. The walleye or the uh, the carp, 
Not so much. Oh boy, it's a big fish. Big strong fish taking another run. <laughs> oh, you, you just gotta give carp fishing a try. You just got to. He's just running again. Oh. <laughs> this is what you can expect if you go carp fishing, folks. And that's why I like a medium action rod. It's got some nice bend to it. Helps absorb the pressure on the line and also gives you an opportunity to fight the fish and have a little more fun. I did bring a second rod with me, a medium heavy one, just in case I needed it, in case something went wrong. I like to bring a, a second rod with me, just in case. Or if I bring one rod, I'll bring a spare spool of line, again, just in case. This guy does not want to come in. This is really, really something. I can't point. That's when you know you got a really, really big part. Again, there's no horse in these fish, you just can't do it. Isn't this a nice way to spend a beautiful day? I don't know when this episode is going to air, but I can tell you I'm fishing here in the summer. It might not air to the winter, I have no idea, but, but I do have a gorgeous, gorgeous day here upon me today. And what a way to spend it. And boatless. No boat required. Find the shoreline. Grab some corn. If you don't want a pre-tied T-turn bait rig, just grab some T-turns, tie your own rigs. Grab some good quality hooks and get out there and do some carp fishing. So close and yet so far. I always said that. He just does not want to come in. Okay, I'm gaining on him ever so slightly. He's going left, he's going right. He knows he's in trouble, but this, folks, is a big carp. Big, strong carp. If it was not as big, I would have had him in by now. Still a battle, but I would have had him in by now. But because this one is a little bit bigger, it's taken me a while. But ever so worth it. And that's what you want to do. You want to enjoy the fight. Have fun with your carp. It's a good sized carp. Oh yeah, there he is there. He's swimming towards shore now. He's coming closer to shore. So if he comes in just a bit more, I can wade out a bit and, uh, and net him. He's just so close. Okay, all right, he's getting, we're getting there. Oh, wow. Wow. There we go. I turned them a bit there. Sometimes you can turn them by just moving your rod tip one way or another. You can turn them a bit and help guide them. But there's not much else I can do with this fish because it's so big and strong. If you come to Niagara Falls, you can take a helicopter ride. Very popular. As you can hear, they're always going. Oh, this is a good carp. This is a nice fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. That is a nice fish. Holy mackerel. <laughs> That's a good size carp. Oh, my God. We're going to get a weight on this one. Folks, that is one big carp. Okay, let's bring them over here. Put them on our mat. Oh my goodness. That's a huge fish, folks. That's a big carp. Okay, you know what? Before I even take them off the hook, we're gonna get a weight on them. Let me put them back in the water, grab my weight scale. Let's get a weight on this fish. Wow, that's a heavy fish. 24, 
23, 12, 24, 24. Take a pound off for the net. That's a 23 pound carp right there. Nice, super nice fish. Okay, let's get him off the hook. Snap a photo for Facebook and Instagram. We'll get him right out into the water again. Okay. That right there is what a 23 pound carp looks like right there, folks. That's a beauty, but look how thick. Look at the back on these fish. Look how thick and wide they are. And look at the tail, the strength in that tail. Unbelievable. These are big, strong, powerful fish. You get one in the 20 pound class, you got to battle as you notice. Okay, let's get them back in. Okay. Oh, wow. He's ready to go already. Oh, look at that carp. Oh my goodness, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. I thought he would have been stressed a bit. Not at all. Down he goes. Oh boy, I need to get back out there again. Okay, now that was super exciting. Take that little bit of weed off my line. Don't want any weeds on there. Let's get it right back out there again. I'm only using a, I've got a one ounce sinker. I could go heavier if I need it, if the current changes, but right now one ounce is good enough. Okay, back in I go, check the drag. I want it just tight enough to set the hook, but not too tight in the case of carp. You want it actually a little more looser than you want tighter because they typically run right, right away and if you have it too tight, they'll break you off instantly. All right, I'm going to hold it again, see if I can get myself into another carp. My day's already been made with that beautiful 23 pounder, but I'm happy with more fish, that's for sure. Oh, we got... <laughs> He got another screamer on. Oh boy. Oh boy, that was great. You know, since I last since that last big fish, I probably had to change my bait a number of times. Gobies. I actually caught three gobies. And they've been cleaning the hook of the corn off my hook. But this time a carp found it before they did. It gave me a nice bite. And it feels like another nice, decent fish. It's going to be hard to beat that last one. But mind you, my biggest is actually over 40 pounds. But I'll tell you, even a 5-pound carp gives you a good tussle. That's why I say you need to have good quality tackle, as I mentioned earlier. Reels are very, very important. In fact, we got a quick video where we share three quick tips. If you're interested, I'll put a link here for you when you're buying a fishing reel, what to look for. Very, very important. In fact, we even got a, a quick video on rods. I'll put a link there for you too. You can check that out as well. But this feels like another nice fish. Doesn't feel as big. That last one when I pulled back, you know, I thought I, I was in the rocks or whatever. That was no rocks, that was all fish. This one feels a little smaller. Still decent though. And that's the thing with carp, even a smaller fish, they're going to give you a nice little tussle. <laughs> You're going to have some fun. <laughs> you can't even horse these smaller ones in either. You just can't do it. <laughs> this is no way to spend the day. I'm loving it. And while we were fishing down here, we got to meet some very friendly tourists. It's an added bonus when you're fishing down here. It's a, it's a great hiking spot down here at the Whirlpool. Met some real nice couples, including one from the UK. Maybe they're tuning in right now. Actually, that's another nice fish. Not as big as that last one, but that's still a good sized carp. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good sized carp. <laughs> yes, it is a good sized carp. Again, can't horse them. Now, I got a bunch of weeds here. You gotta watch these weeds don't get caught in the eye of my, my rod because they'll plug it up and prevent my drag from going out. And drag is super important when you're fishing for carp. Super important. Oh 
yeah, that's a nice carp. Oh yeah, that's a good carp. Another good carp. Oh, let's see if I can maybe get a little closer to him because he's not getting closer to me. He's wanting to go out. Oh. I think when they're they're fighting the current all the time, these carp, they just they develop. They get real strong. Oh yeah, that's a nice carp. That is another nice carp. Big long fish. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, he's still full energy. <laughs> he's still. I brought him in relatively quickly. That's another nice carp. He's long. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna get a quick weight on him too, just for the heck of it. Definitely not as big as that last one. He's registering at 13 point, 13, 14, 13, 16, 13, 15. So I'm gonna say an honest 13 pounds. Nice fish. Okay. And he's long. Wait till you see how long this fish is. He's really, really, really long. Okay. Really long fish. The other one was long too, but thicker. This one is longer and a bit a bit thinner. Let's see if we can take a look at them here. Okay, there we go. Under the net. Can I get that last fin out? There we go. There we go. Now we got another fin in the net. Hey? Isn't that a nice carp? Look how long this fish is. He's long, he's thick, not as thick as that last one, but still just a beautiful fish. And they got those barbells, see the barbells on the on the mouth for feeling around and finding bait. All right, let's get that. Oh, it's wrapped in there pretty darn good. <laughs> that fin is really caught. There we go. Okay, let's get this guy right back in again. What a nice fish. Gave me a nice bite. I loved it. Okay, Mr. Carp. He was ready to go before. Let's see if he's ready to go now. Oh, let's get you out past that rock. I'm just going to move him out just a bit here. Okay, see you later, Mr. Carp. Oh my, this is so much fun, folks. I gotta tell you, you need to take a break from the day-to-day -day routine, get rid of those day-to-day -day stresses, find a shoreline somewhere, get a line wet, give carp fishing a try. You'll be glad you did. I'm sure glad I'm doing it today. Having a great day out here, wherever you are. Thanks ever so much for tuning in to today's episode of Thunderous Fishing Tips. And as always, folks, until next time, good luck and good fishing. Time to rebate.